What's up Reef Fanatics, in today's episode we're taking a look at how to start a nano aquarium or start a reef tank in general. So if you are brand new to the hobby and you're setting up your first aquarium, this is a great way to get started. Initially setting up a saltwater tank, you, you need a tank first of all. So picking up, picking out what size aquarium is going to work best in the space that you have. So. If you don't have a large space, go with a smaller nano tank. There's plenty of sizes that you can choose from. Uh, plenty of tanks will work for you. I know that a lot of times people say larger tanks can be easier, but with a larger tank, you also need larger pieces of equipment. Um, so they can tend to be more expensive some of the time, but with a small, simple tank, like a hang on the back filter, a heater and a light, maybe a small protein skimmer, but you don't really need too many bells and whistles if you're setting up a small tank uh what are your thoughts on that yeah i agree with you on that one i mean i have a bunch of nano tanks on the shelf next to me and they have very minimal filtration one of the tanks has uh two little fishies little reactor on it with some fosban and it keeps the tank crystal clear and then we, elizabeth is working on her tank she just set up a i think it's like 10 gallons it's an all-in-one system uh, okay. from lifeguard aquatics we'll have videos out on that shortly but that is an all-in-one system it has a little pump that comes with it a little spigot you know to push the water out uh, like a nozzle and it has a couple bells and whistles but you don't need to go that fancy uh, right you can literally buy a 10 gallon tank and be just fine a lot of people say oh that's not a good idea i mean you got to do what you can afford and what you have space for i mean there's a lot of factors mm -hmm. that play into it but this can definitely be done as joey's going to explain so yeah absolutely and correct me if i'm wrong but the lifeguard tanks are pretty inexpensive they're pretty affordable you can get those on amazon yeah um, they're relatively cheap for what they are yeah and we, we can leave a link to that in the description below uh to amazon but yeah, so once you pick out your tank, you get some filtration for it. Um, for instance, this one is just a hang on the back filter and a heater and a light. And that's all this tank really needs. So right here, we got live sand going in and then live rock. So whether you're doing live rock and live sand or dry rock and starting where you have to get it going with bottled bacteria, both ways are, are just fine. Um, some ways take a little bit longer to get going. And then all live rock means is that it has bacteria and the beneficial bacteria and stuff on it and in it so that way that kind of helps the cycle start the biggest thing with the small tanks and that people really should know uh that the evaporation is probably going to be the biggest problem yes because uh, yes. it's a smaller tank it's a smaller water volume so your evaporation might, like it might evaporate like a half inch but your salinity is gonna go raise as it's evaporating mm -hmm. so just Keep that in mind because salt doesn't really evaporate entirely. So your salt levels will slowly rise as your tank evaporates. And the smaller the tank, the quicker it's going to rise because you just don't have that much water volume. Yeah, I'm topping off these tanks like every other day. So, I mean, yeah, you don't want your salinity fluctuating up and down all the time or, or mm -hmm. have a big change in that. But yeah, evaporation uh, with a smaller tank for sure, you need to monitor that. But yeah, uh, this tank has macro algaes in it. The, the big thing we're talking about or that we're gonna get to, I got a few more slides here. Starting that nitrogen cycle and getting that thing going and what that looks like, kind of created a quick little slide here. So you have your fish waste or decaying matter is gonna produce ammonia and ammonia is what is toxic for fish. So you don't want to add fish during this stage. That's why you need to let the process happen and let that bacteria build up. So you go from ammonia to nitrite, which is still toxic, but it's still doing the thing, doing the process until it gets to nitrate, which is less toxic. And so once you test your tank, so I would say when you're test, when you're, when you have a brand new tank and you're doing your test, you want to test every few days or at least once a week, you want to check your ammonia. And then once your ammonia gets to zero to check it even farther than that, you will test uh, nitrites once your nitrites are at zero and you're reading nitrates then you've kind of reached that cycle for the nitrogen cycle where your bacteria is converting ammonia to nitrite to nitrate then you can start slowly adding things to your aquarium and get that bacteria building more and more so that is the nitrogen cycle in a nutshell any tips for getting a tank started you you were mentioning that you're still a little iffy on the bottled bacteria. i mean it's not that i'm like iffy on it i just i don't think it's going to instantly cycle an aquarium that's right right i mean that definitely i think would definitely help 
pr- like promote like the nitrogen cycle and get it moving along quicker. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't think it's like gonna be instant, if you know what I mean. Like, gotcha, gotcha. It's not like you pour it in and then you're good to go. Same yeah, day, but efficient. Yeah. yeah. So usually, uh, how many weeks would you say, depending on how you start it up? I mean, it could take what two to six weeks. Yeah, on, on average, I tend to notice the smaller tanks cycle a little bit quicker. I think that's probably just because of less water volume. My 75 gallon took about a month to cycle completely. And then like the smaller tanks, I mean, a couple weeks. And that's, I mean, it really ranges. I mean, there's so many different factors that play into it. Because I know some people that start with like just sand, like dry rock and like no like bacteria whatsoever just whatever's in the water and stuff and that that can take months like yeah so like if you're gonna start out complete dry rock i do like you gotta put like in my opinion put a little piece of live rock in there just to help promote like that bacteria growth otherwise it's gonna take a lot longer yeah because if you're starting with dry rock and like dry sand you have no bacteria at all in the aquarium you have to add Mm -hmm. the bacteria and so like you're saying it's gonna take a lot longer to develop so you have to be a lot more patient with it now how about lighting uh having a light during the cycle or when you're first setting up the tank it's not really too so, important to have a light it's in the not beginning. really important i mean all it's right. going to do is just grow algae that's really yep. all it's going to do i mean if you have no light you're really not going to get too much of that so just keep the light off and wait until your ammonia levels like all that stuff levels out and then maybe try and turn on your light i mean you're going to get algae either way but as long as you don't have any corals or really any fish in there i mean there's not entirely a reason to have it and then again with the cycle in the beginning i don't know if i said this earlier but you want to make sure that you are getting ammonia readings and make sure that you're getting nitrite readings and then make sure they drop back to zero before you start adding stuff because if you're testing like when if you're doing like the fishless cycle which i would recommend uh you Mm -hmm. always want to put a little bit of food in there to kind of you know get your little cycle going to start up some ammonia i mean i've seen people do like damsel fish to cycle their tank and stuff but almost every single time i've noticed people do that they regret putting the damsel fish in there first because it establishes territory no matter what kind of damsel you have they do get territorial and aggressive so when you're trying to put other like peaceful fish in there like gobies antheus and all that sort of stuff they can get very territorial and then half the people end up tearing up their tank trying to get the fish out so i mean really think what you're gonna do beforehand mollies are a good thing i mean they're really Mm -hmm. easy to catch out once uh, you know the tank cycles and you want to put some more stuff in there super hardy and they do help with algae um so i mean if you do want to leave them in there all they're gonna do is just kind of help clean up your algae but i always try to go with like a fishless cycle just throw some food in there some tdo or something and just let it go yeah once that breaks down it's gonna start that cycle going so yeah yeah that's a good way to do it thank you so much for checking out this video if you liked what you saw then i know you're gonna love this video right here go ahead click or tap your screen to watch that thank you so much for liking commenting and subscribing and i will see you next time on the coral reef talk Thank you.